Good afternoon. I, it's my honor to uh, bring this new presentation to you about the guidelines. You are required as a club to have uh, this session once every year. They usually prefer it to be held in September because that's when the school year is starting again and it's a good time to have a refresher on Kiwanis policies when working with youth. Uh, these are the new revised standards that are effective October 1st, 2016. There has been some changes. Why do we need this training? Kiwanis International is committed to maintaining policies and for community members that's, that's, and these yeah, young you people be that trust that our programs are safe places for them. Okay. Yeah. If we want to be the premier provider of youth service clubs and programs, we must hold ourselves and our fellow members to the highest standards of conduct and awareness. Thank you for protecting young people and the Kiwanians who work with them. You're strengthening the Kiwanis family's continuous status as a leader in building the next generation of servant leaders. The training objection, objectives are understand the Kiwanis International's Youth Protection Guidelines, Make choices and decisions that protect you and the youth you serve. Identify suspected child abuse and troubling behavior. Know your responsibilities if you suspect abuse. Respond appropriately if a child discloses abuse to you or if you witness troubling behavior. Youth Protection Guidelines were first approved by Kiwanis International in January 2007. Since then, updates have been made to ensure Kiwanis adhere to the best practices when working with youth. We'll now decide, uh, describe what these different uh, expectations are. The definition of child abuse is to harm a child which occurs immediately or through accumulated effects over a period of time. To me this is a startling statistic. There are approximately three million cases of child abuse and neglect involving almost 5.5 million children reported each year. One type of abuse is emotional abuse. It is one of the most pervasive and damaging types. It consists of neglecting your child's needs for emotional support, love and caring. Emotional abuse that exists independently of other forms of abuse is most difficult form of child abuse to identify and stop. Signs of emotional abuse uh, reports from the child emotionally abusive behavior. Physical abuse is in some ways the easiest to understand. Signs and cues, any injury, bruise, burn, fracture, abdominal, or head injury that cannot otherwise be explained. Sexual abuse includes any kind of sexual act or behavior with the child. Signs include dramatic behavior changes, physical complaints such as headaches, stomach aches, or genital pain, or discomfort that can't be explained. Fear of a particular person or place and of being alone with that person or in that place. Overreaction to a question about someone touching him or her. Sudden increase in awareness of and preoccupation with sexual conduct, words, and body parts. 
may seem to be hypersexualized and try to get other youth to perform sexual acts. Please note, there could be alternative explanations for each of these signs. It can be difficult, but use your best judgment when interpreting what you see and enlist the help if necessary, confidentially and with discretion. Troubling behavior. This term is used in the guidelines. guidelines. It defines all forms of child abuse as described previously, behavior not in accordance with the Kiwanis Youth Protection Guidelines, illegal behavior of an adult, something that causes your internal voice to say, something's not right about this. <laughs> there are 12 points in the Youth Protection Guidelines. And now we'll go, we'll review them, and that's what's on your table there. So if you want to make any notes or comments about anything, or uh, as we go through one, I'll go through them. And if you have any questions about it, uh, we'll take them after each uh, uh, guideline. A Kiwanis Club must inform and educate its members on youth protection guidelines. It should occur annually. September is recommended. At each Kiwanis District Convention and Conference, an educational forum or workshop should be scheduled to cover the guidelines and the best practices for working with youth. Uh, this uh, information that you've had uh, this training will be reported by your secretary on the monthly report, another task that he does. <laughs> the next guideline is about chaperones. Under the Kiwanis Youth Protection Guidelines, a chaperone must be a Kiwanis member, faculty member, parent, legal guardian, or person who is local parentis in the place of a parent, 21 years of age or older, approved by the school or agency, registered with the school or agency to accompany youth at the specific events. Possible chaperones include Qantas members, faculty advisors, parents, teachers, staff of a community organization, and other volunteers. Are there any questions about the requirements of a chaperone? Now this is the new part that's effective October 1st, 2016. Criminal history and background checks. Kiwanis International is complete, com committed to maintaining policies and procedures that create safe clubs for youth to perform service, build character, and develop leadership. Beginning in October 2016, all Kiwanis advisors to a service leadership program, which includes Action Club, Circle K, Key Club, Builders Club, and K, Keys, K Kids, will be required to have a criminal background check conducted and verified by Kiwanis International. All criminal history background checks will be valid for two years. Uh, the cost for this uh, uh, background check with Kiwanis International is $25. You have a question? When are we going to get all the different agencies requiring this to accept somebody at other agencies. I've had four of these checks this year. And you gotta have to do it. I had to do it four different times. That's ridiculous. Jaris, I think the issue is that for every organization, in their own risk reduction, they have to have their own test done. So it, it would be nice if we no, could no. accept somebody else's, but we really can't. Uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, well, it, 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 it is, uh, Partly, too, because of the, your liability insurance premiums. If we're, we're insured by Kiwanis' liability insurance, and they are requiring 
that those people that they might have to cover have a criminal ba history background checked and it has to be done by the organization you're serving. Uh, I believe that was Gail that was telling you, you hit the nail right on, on the head. And I know what several clubs are doing. I know it's an, an inconvenience, but it's done online and uh, at the International Convention in Toronto, it was strongly suggested that those people within the clubs that need to do this, that uh, the club could pay that $25 for them and it is legal to take that money out of your service account you, but you could use your administrative account or the service account. It's legal to take it out of the service account because it pertains to working with children. Jerry? Yeah, good, because we just did that. So uh, it was 1995, actually. Uh, we just had uh, our one person that we need to have that, this done. Uh, there seems to be a disconnect between actually getting it done and finding any documentation that it was completed. Uh, we haven't gotten anything in the club. Uh, I don't know if uh, International has, but we've gone through the website, but there hasn't been any. The only time you will be, list. if you do not hear anything, that person has been approved. You will only be notified if they do not pass the test. We should have, uh, you, the statement is we have to have this, we have to yeah. verify that it's done. Other than the fact that we paid the money for it, we don't know that it's, we don't have any way to verify it. I'm just suggesting now it needs that this that connection needs to be made. It okay. Needs to be made at the uh, uh, international level. I will uh, call uh, Qantas International and ask that that be done. Thank you. Excuse me if I don't write this down. My mind not re might not remember it tomorrow morning. Okay, and then another part of the criminal history background checks for Kiwanis International sponsors events, such as the Key Club International Convention or Key Leader events, criminal hit background checks for adult volunteers must also be conducted and verified by Kiwanis International. In addition to criminal history background checks for Kiwanis advisors, Kiwanis clubs are strongly encouraged to ensure confidential background checks for all club members who will be working directly with youth and have not already undergone a background check. Uh, they are wanting the clubs uh, with your policies and procedures since this criminal background history check is n new as of October 1st uh, for your board or an appropriate committee to draft a, a, a policy stating these guidelines so that you have it within your club records just in case uh, at some point in time there would be an unfortunate incident that happens with this club when they are working with the, the youth as an advisor. And it is just, it's really strongly, the Kiwanis standards are just now for the advisors to the service leadership programs, but if you have any other members who work very closely with the youth, uh, it is recommended that they also undergo the Kiwanis background check. Yes. Uh, I am. I can look that up too and get back with you. I, to my knowledge, they don't because each club is, has their own unique situations with with groups that they work with, where there might be a, a situation in, involving youth that you might become aware with by working with them. Uh, but I will uh, check for that too. That essentially means every member of this club has to do it. We have bring up grades. We're bringing kids to our meetings. No, yeah, well, the bringing up grades—that's a that you're sponsoring a school 
program. It's not a service leadership program. Terrific Kids and, and Bug aren't. Uh, and if you are approved by the school to be there, that is sufficient. Okay. It's just the the you know, the advisors that work closely, or uh, you know, it's in in some of those positions. You have to be approved by the school to work with the the children, but when you're with a and that program stays completely within the school, Key Club does things outside of the school, even though school policies guide them. But they still do things. They maybe come here and help you with a fundraising project and different things like that. So that's why the the advisor who would be the club advisor when the key club kids are with you would usually be on the present premises at that event and she would he or she would already have had the Kiwanis background check. Yes. Uh, I hear what you say about key club, but you have in friends here Circle K. Yes, because there are some members in Circle K who are not yet eighteen. Doesn't matter if you're at Purdue. At Purdue says that's it. So if we have a picnic and invite Circle K kids and the advisor's not there, are you saying whoever? No, because that is that is a, a, a social event where there'll be officers from the key club itself and people here from this <coughs> club. That's a, that's a a, a a social event, a gathering, and it's just like we, you know, if you attend one of their meetings. What we're doing, Camilla, what we're trying to protect here, and, and, and you probably know as well, is that um, when pe when people are working with kids in a in a more intimate situation, or they're conveying them, they're transporting them, um, you know that that all of the things, the protections that we need, this plus the rule of three that you always have, you know, uh, more people get around. So here you would have. Plenty of people around if you were at a picnic. Um, um, well, I understand that part, but when Key Club, when Circle K is going to a project or they're going to the convention, and I'm the only one in my car driving them there, am I supposed to have this? I mean, yes. every time we do anything with a bunch of kids under FERPA rules, we still have to do this. According to that's what Qantas International requirement is. Do we have any under 18? You don't. Yeah, you, you know, if you don't have, if there's no one there under 18, then I would think you would be able to not have to do that, but you don't know when that's going to come up, and for $25 for two years. You mean the, so you've got to ask everybody who's, like when they come to my house for lunch, I'm going to have to say, are you 18? Yes. <laughs> no. 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 No worries. You will ask the <laughs> the, the The easiest way to me would be that if you're working that closely with young people from the Circle K. And we thank you. Yes, and it's a I man, we just started a Circle K club in in uh, at Wabash, the, the Croppers Club did, and, and our advisor is the easiest thing to do to protect yourself more so than anybody else is to have that spend the twenty five dollars and have a background check done every two years and then you're in compliance with Kiwanis rules and with Purdue rules. And I have a feeling that this is going to snowball and start including more activities as time goes on. This is just the Hopefully it's not the tip of the iceberg. Five more minutes. Okay, well, if we, there's no more questions on that one. We'll go briefly, quickly through the rest of these overnight stays. 
an adequate adult chap chaperoning is required. And adequate chaperoning is one adult male for each 10 or part of 10 use, one adult female for each 10 or part of 10 youth females. And then there's some examples here, 15 youth girls and eight youth boys. The answer would be you would need two adult female cha uh, chaperones and one adult male chaperone, 11 youth girls, 11 youth boys, would be two adult females, two adult males, two youth girls and five youth boys would be one adult female and one adult male. One other thing, since I only have five minutes left. Where is it? Do you, if you have any event that requires permission forms, those permission forms uh, refer to any document that has information about youth participants, including but not limited to registration forms, medical information, and permission to treat forms. If you have these forms, you need to protect the information, treat the documents as confidential, keep each one for a minimum of three years, but refer to your local, state, and provincial law, and those documents can be destroyed, when they can be destroyed, that is after three years, they must be shredded or destroyed in a way that maintains confidentiality. And that's the one that was a, is a little bit different. The rest of them on your sheet are pretty well self-explanatory. If you go through them and have any further questions, you can email me and I will find an answer for you. And uh, Taka has my email address, so I can't disappear. I thank you for your attention.